everyone. Welcome to the program. I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Eastham, and this week we're marking the first week of Ramadan in the Muslim world. Coming up, given the difference in working and waking hours during the holy month, we look at sleep patterns and how best to maximize rest. And we're on the ground in Egypt to meet a community of Christians. We're getting to know their Muslim neighbors much better. But first, we head to Sheikh Zayed Mosque in Abu Dhabi to go behind the scenes on preparations for one of the most important times in the Islamic calendar. Ramadan is a time of reflection and communion for the estimated 1.8 billion Muslims worldwide. And this is the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque in Abu Dhabi, the largest mosque in the UAE and a place that becomes a focal point of prayer and congregation for the Islamic community in the Emirates. Its construction began in 1996 and its prayer halls first opened for Eid al-Adha worship in 2007. Its completion involved more than 3,000 workers and 38 companies, including civil engineers, artisans and craftsmen from Europe, North Africa and the Middle East. Its aesthetic was created with the use of marble, semi-precious stones, crystals and ceramics. To cater for those abstaining from food and drink during sunrise and sunset during Ramadan, the mosque hosts a massive nightly meal to break the fast called an iftar. It's an annual event which takes six months of planning and involves some 400 chefs to feed an estimated 30,000 people every night. The hospitality company serving the meals recalls how the idea, which began 15 years ago, has grown to be a truly multinational and multi-faith affair. We're honored to serve this uh, and it's a, it's a kind of a privilege to, to be in, a, in a such initiative. Um, it's really overwhelming to see the amount of people, regardless their background, to come all at once. The iftar meal includes a healthy mix of protein, carbohydrates, and calorie-packed dishes, and preparations start early in the day, with colossal piles of vegetables washed and chopped by hand, kilo upon kilo of rice cooked, thousands of chickens marinated in biryani spices and rich stews with the influence of nearby India simmering in industrial pots for hours. We use uh, seven tons of chicken, 10 tons of fresh vegetable, 10 tons of uh, rice as well, and uh, seven tons of uh, meat. It, it's a huge amount of food. The food boxes are then loaded into temperature-controlled trucks for transportation to the Grand Mosque. And just before 7 p.m., as the sun sets over the UAE capital on the first day of Ramadan, the Azan, or Islamic call to the Maghrib prayer, rings out from minarets across the city. for iftar is then marked by the boom of a cannon being fired. Helping to serve food to the masses is Emirati charity worker Saeed. People come in and we try to organize their seating. It's a place for them to come and relax and to break their fast in an orderly fashion. So we don't create congestion, we try to reduce the traffic. It's a time for many to reunite with their fellow countrymen, like 32-year-old Kamal from Egypt, who's been attending the Grand Mosque gatherings for three years. It feels like it does in my country, among family and my friends. They are all around, as you see. This becomes like a family iftar, not an iftar by yourself. Following iftar and as the crowds dissipate from the mosque, many Muslims will choose to meet again for suhoor or the last pre-dawn meal before sun rises at around 5.40 a.m. After which another day of contemplation, prayer and fasting awaits before the moon once again emerges with Maghreb prayers as night falls on Abu Dhabi. For some Christians living in pockets of Egypt, Ramadan is a particularly special time of year. Hania Mohib has more on the open hearts, open door policy of a community in Cairo.
This group of 20 and 30 somethings has come together in the popular Cairo district of Masr al Qadima to give their time to help the needy of society. They are putting together Ramadan boxes filled with basic food items and provisions that were given in donation. The group includes both Muslim and Christian volunteers. <laughs> Landlord Atif William has been hosting the activities of the organization called Helm Stablantar for the past three years. This is what my late father taught us. The closest people to us are our neighbors, and the religion doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you are Muslim or Christian. In my opinion, being religious is all about treating people well. Atif is seen as a kind-hearted, charitable Christian man within the local community. As for Mr. Atif, we can't thank him enough. He always offers us the space to prepare and he allows us to store the food during Ramadan. He does it with so much love. He even hires people to help us. Much like Masr al Qadima, the middle class district of Shubra is considered to have a high level of tolerance and social coexistence with friendly residents. Each year, Ramadan tables are set for passers by to help themselves as the sun sets. This tent will house an iftar table that has been in operation for almost 40 years. What is somewhat unique is that the main organizer, Gamil Banayoti, is a Christian. He is a modest man who works alongside elderly men who were teenagers when the activity first started. Gamil lives alone, but his home has the presence of family and friends. He also cherishes members of the good old days. <laughs> Our table is called the National Unity Table, and it's something we work hard on together. Both Muslims and Christians are here to offer food to people who need it. We would never say no to anyone. And my personal attachment to Ramadan began in 1973. Gamil and his neighbors are very proud to have kept this activity going for such a long time and nothing goes to waste, with the end of one iftar, marking preparations for the next. Insomnia remains a largely undiagnosed, untreated problem in the Middle East, with many doctors saying that the cases for children in particular are on the rise. Salim S. Saeed goes in search of the perfect night's sleep and finds out how sufferers have grown tired of old-fashioned cures. Can't shut down after a busy day? You're not alone. Dr. Hadi Jardak runs a sleep center in Abu Dhabi. He monitors how patients rest at night, coaching them to develop better habits. He says insomnia is a growing problem affecting about 25% of people in the region, especially during the holy month of Ramadan, where Muslims fast from sunrise to sunset and tend to sleep more during the day and stay up late at night, which leaves them at risk to cardiovascular problems. To be able to fall asleep, a gland in the brain called the pineal body secretes the hormone melatonin, which gives you that drowsy feeling. Smartphones, tablets, and laptops emit a type of blue light which inhibits its release, reducing the quantity and quality of your night's slumber. There's a trend in the Middle East where the parents are pushing their kids to stay on tablets and on their phones because it's convenient, because the child don't cry, he doesn't bother them. When adults don't get the recommended seven to nine hours of sleep, they feel lethargic and are unable to perform complex mental tasks. In children, it is the complete opposite. So children, when they are deprived from sleep, they are hyperactive, but attention deficit. So lots of the times we have what we call ADHD, attention deficit hyperactive disorder, and it goes back to just sleep deprivation. In the long term, a lack of sleep is linked to a host of health problems, from higher chances of obesity and heart disease to the body's ability to fight infections from the common cold to cancer. So what are the doctor's orders to guarantee peaceful slumber? It's simply to take it easy. My advice is the last one and a half hours, get away from screens, try to do an activity that is calm, that doesn't need lots of physical activity, and then bit by bit, you'll go into a good sleep during the night. While the biology of sleep is not completely understood, it's considered critical to healthy living. 
and to get a better night's rest, some are exploring alternative ways of disconnecting from their busy lives and reconnecting with their inner self. And begin to tune into your breathing. Find your soothing, calming breath. Stephen Marks is a British real estate lawyer turned yoga instructor who practices nidra or sleep yoga, meant to put you in the closest state possible to sleep while remaining fully conscious. The idea is to try and slow the mind down. And this technique is clever because it forces you to actually project your mind into the parts of the body. So you come into your body, and once you step out of the mind and into the body, you're in a much better place. Mark says for over a year now, he's taught the yogic meditation that has helped war veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder and also the everyday person on the go, looking to calm their nerves and get away from all the distracting noise in their daily lives. Everyone is overstimulated at the moment because we live in such a you know, crazy, fast-paced world. We're overwhelmed with technology. Things are trying to grab our attention the whole time and we don't take enough time to relax. A testament to the idea that sometimes doing absolutely nothing is the best thing for you. Well, that is a wrap of our show. We hope that you enjoyed it. And don't forget, you can catch all of our programs online at urinews.com. Before I say goodbye, here are some social media posts that caught the attention of the team this week. To welcome Ramadan in Iraq, Dahab's parents posted this of their daughter dressing up in traditional clothing. And Volkan from Turkey uploaded this time-lapse of him sharing an iftar with friends.